Hello everyone, welcome to What If Issei Was Abused and Becomes the True White Dragon God Emperor Part 3. Before we start please go support Issei Lucifer for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. Chapter 10 Rating Game 1 Sided Fight. Training Summary. The only ones who trained were Kiba and Issei, as according to Ria's she and her peerage were powerful enough, and with the help of Issei, it is an easy win, so instead they relaxed the entire five days stupid arrogant bitch meanwhile, Nero was teaching Issei how to use him demonic side specifically the power of Sparta, but Issei struggled with it, and Barley grasped it however he managed to activate his devil trigger partially, meaning he could turn only two parts of his body at a time into that of a true devil. And Albion taught Issei two of his ice moves. Frozen Fisher and Ice Field. These are wide area moves made for mass impact. Day of the rating game. The whole of the occult research club was waiting in the club room for the game to begin. Riaz was sitting on her desk, Akeno dutifully standing behind her. Kiba was wearing a little protection on his arms and legs to prevent damage that could slow him down. Kaneko was wearing mixed martial arts gear and looked to be ready for everything bullshit. Rainer was sitting on one of the couches doing nothing let go suck a heck. Dot. This was the scene that Grafia had walked in on when she appeared in her classic silver grimery magic circle. She inwardly sighed, she knew Rhea's all too well, due to taking care of her when she was younger and knew she wouldn't train, she should be going over things right, but once again, she was a rotten spoiled arrogant bitch's combination of bitch and princess. Dot. Then she saw Issei and smiled he smiled back at her no one besides Rhea's caught it and smiled inwardly with a wicked sick grin, she had a plan to make Issei suffer or so she thought. Grafia teleported them to the game arena. After dropping them off Grafia disappeared via magic circle, leaving the orc alone in their thoughts. After a few moments, Grafia's voice could be heard and she announced and said. Hello everyone. I am Grafia, a maid from the House of Grimory, and today I will be the arbiter of the rating match between the House of Grimory and the House of Phoenix. In the name of my master, Serzich's Lucifer, I will be keeping my eye on this match. By using both Ria's and Riser's opinions, we created this battlefield which is a replica of the school, Kuo Academy, which Ria's attends in the human world. The location where both teams were transported will be their base. Ria's base would be the Occult Research Club's club room located in the old school building. Razor base would be the student council's room located in the new building. For the pawns to use promotion, please head to the enemy's base to do it. You have 5 minutes to strategies. After 5 minutes the game will begin. Your time to strategies begins now. Ria's Kiba can you please bring me a map of the school. She requested her blonde knight as he nodded and left to look for it. It only took a few seconds before the blonde boy returned with a map with him that he spread in front of Ria's. Here it is president. President, if you would, I suggest sending me an essay out riser will probably scatter his peerage to try and separate us as to reduce our numbers and chances of winning. I can take on both the knights and four of the pawns, I'll take out the pawns separately if possible, and Issei can take on the other four, then rest riser will probably go after Issei personally. Meanwhile Kaneko should take on the gym and damage them enough for Akeno to blow up the gym and take out the rooks. Rias. That's a good idea I see my leadership skills, what skills the skills of being a boar have been passed on to you my precious servants, and I'll take on Riser with Raynor before he can go for Issei any objections. Riaz. No good we go with Kiba's plan. Issei idiot, Kiba. Aren't you supposed to make the plans and what skills me Issei and Riser came up with this, you haven't taught us anything. The Keno. Here, said as she handed out two small transivers. What are they for? Raynor asked as he looked over the small transiver that he was given. Riaz. That's for communicating with us during a fight. Everyone has one and don't worry each high class devil gets his set of transivers so that it can't listen in during the game. And. Well Kiba was gone and Grafia and Issei were talking, Riser sent Kiba a message regarding the game, later on, him Issei and Kiba formulated a strategy to make the game look good so no one would know it fabricated. I'm not gonna write the whole rating game I'll get to Issei fighting Riser. In the VIP room where Serzich's Zexus Ajuka Beelzebub, Lord Phoenix, Lady Phoenix, and Ravella were. Lord Phoenix. What do you think of the match Zexius? Zexius. So far it has been pretty good however it's just Rhea's her pawn and Bishop but. Lord Phoenix. You don't believe she can win. Serzich's. No she can't, knowing Rhea she's more than likely relying upon her pawn, since he's the only one that stands a chance at defeating Riser, and if he is eliminated even if Riser is weaker, he still has his queen and sister. Ravella. Her knight is quite impressive I'd like to have him in my peerage. Ravella was a beautiful blonde haired young woman with her hair tied in long twin tails and blue eyes, as well as a voluptuous figure. She wore a skin tight red outfit with black accents and green highlights, with an odd but fitting collar with Graham, which is proclaimed to be the most powerful demonic sword, it's also a dragon slayer, it's trapped to her right side. She looked like an older version of Ravel. Lady. That boy is quite interesting who is he? Zexius. 
That's a surprise, but I have a feeling you'll find out soon however I will say this fate truly has been cruel to him, and the fact he can keep moving forward is remarkable. The Phoenix family was curious about what he meant, but decided to leave it alone for now, but Ravella was even more intrigued. Flashback, Grafia had returned to the meeting room where the Devil Kings were, and the first thing they noticed was Grafia was smiling. She informed them of her talk with Issei, they were depressed from hearing what Issei has been through, and angrier at Rias especially Sir Awful, she had started to look at Issei like a little brother so did Sir Zichas. They were relieved when Grafia said she had a way to heal Issei's heart and that he had feelings for her and she felt the same. Flashback end. Here we see a bruised Rias and Rainer Riser's Queen Yubaluna took out Rainer and only Rias and Issei were left Kibara's Eind. To be honest, Riser's peerage could have wiped Rias and her peerage, except for Issei and Kibo off the map, Riser let her win, only so he could crush her spirit. Bravel. You might as well give up Rias you can't win my brother is near low ultimate class. Rias paled at that she realized Riser was toying with her, an ordinary person would have surrendered, but her pride wouldn't allow her. Rias. Never I don't care what you say. Riser just like I thought idiot is sake Weiber I challenge you to a duel if I win Rias will resign if you win I'll resign and Rias will be free do you accept. Then Issei flew up using his devil wings and landed on top of the building between Rias and Riser. Issei. I accept. Rias. Is say how dare you agree without my consent all of this is your fault I wouldn't be in this situation if you would have just taken my virginity like I asked. Is say And let you grape me no thanks. I'm saving my heart for another woman besides it's not against the rules I have the right to accept or decline. Then the VIP room. Sexious. Risers near low ultimate class. Lord Phoenix. Yes he did well in the battle against me, but hasn't been promoted yet we informed Serzichas two days ago. Serzichas. Indeed however had Rias trained she would have stood a chance that as of now every rests on Issei. Rias. Issei how dare you agree without my consent all of this is your fault I wouldn't be in this situation if you would have just taken my virginity like I asked. Issei. And let you grape me no thanks. I'm saving my heart for another woman besides it's not against the rules I have the right to accept or decline. Everyone except Serzichas and Zexius had wide eyes they couldn't believe what Rias just said. Serzichas Zexius idiot. Lady Phoenix. Is she serious? Serzichas. Yes Grafia saw it with her own eyes however Issei was fighting Rias, so she couldn't get far before Grafia came, Ravella. That's just wrong, Lord Phoenix. I agree not even Riser would do that, however, it's such a shame what he has become, Ravella. I have a feeling it'll change after the game. She and Ravel were the only ones who knew about Riser's facet. Then one of the gauntlets on her the blue gem in it started to shine a bit when she took it out and Ravella's eyes narrowed at the reaction of the crystal. Ravella. So he is the white dragon emperor. Ravella looked back at the screen and continued watching the battle. Before anyone could ask her about what she said and her gauntlet they heard Lady Phoenix yell. Lady Phoenix. He's the White Dragon Emperor. Lord Phoenix. What so this is why he stands a chance. Serzichas. Not exactly you'll see soon. But they say. They say. My name is Issei Gwyber Sparta son of Virgil Sparta and brother in all but a mother Albion Gwyber. Everyone except Serzichas and Zexius. What? Rias. You're a Sparta. It was then Issei revealed his true form. All the females in the VIP room blushed, and so did the women watching it cause the rating game was live Dumbus Rhea should have thought things through, oops my bad she doesn't have a brain. VIP room, Lord Phoenix. How? Ravella. Blushing I thought the Sparta bloodline died out, and it was never known Virgil had a son he looks really handsome. Lady Phoenix. He's quite handsome, but does Riser stand a chance? Zexius. I don't know, but I believe this will be a close fight. Serzichas. Issei is without a doubt the best white dragon emperor the world has ever seen past, present, and future. Ravella. Rhea's made a huge mistake now it's going to cost her, but Issei and Riser, Ravel. That's impossible the Spartas died out a long time ago you were born to two humans. Issei. Is that so? First I was adopted and those bastards weren't even my adoptive parents, second. He turned his arm into that of a true devil. Riser. Haha you truly are incredible to say you are without a doubt a Sparta you have my deepest gratitude and respect, ever since I was a boy I was fascinated by the legendary hero Sparta, and to fight one of his descendants is a dream come true. To say, You flatter me, I'm glad to have granted your wish, but let's begin. Riser. Indeed. And thus the battle that would go down in the history of the underworld and the mark of Issei's and Riser's fame began. You will have your work cut out for you he's near breaking his growth plateau, and he's been training hard. The only chance you will have of winning will be if you use Balance Breaker. Yeah, I know, but I will first see how much my base form compares to a low ultimate class. Both competitors were staring each other off. After a few seconds, Risers disappeared, and in one swift movement, he threw a vicious haymaker toward Issei. Just as the punch was about to connect Issei's fast brain reflexes kicked in, and he was able to catch Risers' fist just before it hit. Issei then in one swift motion hit a riser with a roundhouse kick that sent him skidding back on the ground. 
When he stopped he felt something moist on his face. Checking it he saw blood. Wiping it he looked back at Issei who was now on both feet again. Issei's face lost its impassiveness and his mouth twitched upward to give Riser a battle hunger grin. Riser suddenly felt his blood pumping. This was the fight he was looking for. In front of him was an opponent who he could go all out with and achieve his goals. That's why he returned the smirk in kind and both disappeared in a burst of speed that only clan heads and the Mao level devils were able to follow. The whole stadium was filled with shockwaves that were being originated through the collision of Issei's and Riser's fists. Punches and kicks were flying everywhere. Issei went in with an upper sit which Riser blocked and countered with a sucker punch that was caught by Issei. Issei then went for the uppercut which Riser caught, but it was faint using his flexibility, he jumped up and hit a vicious kick toward Riser's head, which Riser caught again before grinning at Issei, and then spinning him around and throwing him into the air. Issei manipulated his body in midair and landed gracefully. He charged forward as soon as he landed on the ground, and another series of punches and kicks were exchanged between the two. Issei was suddenly hit by a vicious haymaker which stunned him temporarily. Riser taking full advantage of that launch to full offensive, advantage of that launch to full offensive, and Issei was hit by a series of vicious blows, before he retaliated and hit Riser with a heavy headbutt, before sucker punching him back. Both of them created a little distance between each other. They were both not bleeding and were only slightly winded. The display had caused the jaws of the viewers to drop Issei was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Riser who was near low ultimate class, and Issei wasn't using his sacred gear. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Raphia was grinning after a display like this Issei was sure to permanently enter the gossip group of the underworld and would be a well-talked topic among the higher-ups. He had already shown power needed to be a high-class devil, which was required to marry her if things went that route, and she knew she didn't choose a weak man, this was good. Riser. You are definitely high-class devil material. But now it's over I am going to go to the next level and fight you as an ultimate-class devil. It was fun but it ends now. Issei, heck come and get me. It's not like hell I'm going all out. Ice Dragon Emperor's roar. He finished with a shout that sent a large torrent of ice energy toward Riser, who quickly jumped back and shouted, Hellfire Blaze. A large torrent of fire left his hands and met Issei's ice in midair. Both the attacks kept on fighting for dominance before the fire overtook the ice. Issei dodged and flew towards Riser shouting Ice Dragon Emperor's iron fist. As he said that his fists were coated with ice and he rushed towards Riser at high speeds. Riser however was now a completely different person level as they clashed the spectators saw streaks of orange and white. Riser was easily blocking all of Issei's attacks. Suddenly he sent a vicious punch towards Issei which sent him flying upwards. He suddenly took a stance that nearly everyone recognized, it was one of Riser's Phoenix's ultimate finishing moves. Ria's paled at the sight. Whereas Riser smirked. Both thought that Issei had lost. Grafia however knew that was the case Issei hadn't used the divine dividing even once during the match. He was waiting for something but for what? Riser finally called his move Ascent of the Phoenix. As he said, that his entire body was engulfed by a hot flame which took the form of a phoenix. He flew into the air and punched Issei on the back and pushed him to the ground, causing a loud explosion and smoke to appear. When the smoke disappeared Riser could be seen removing his fist from Olymp Issei's body. Riser looked at Issei with a respectful look and said, you did very well not many can force me to use that move. Keep training get stronger and come face me again but today it's your loss. As Riser was talking Riaz was crying to tears. She had lost her only chance at freedom she never had one dumbest dot suddenly however the divine dividing appeared on Issei's back and from it, Albion announced divide x10. As soon as he said that Riser felt most of his power leave him and he became disoriented causing him to go on one knee. Issei however then stood up with a smirk and said. You didn't think you won did you? My last attack was a trap and your blocking it made it easier. Now I am going to show you my full power the power of a heavenly dragon. You should feel honored because you are the first one to ever witness my true power. Issei then floated into the air a whitish blue aura surrounding him. He then shouted balance break as soon as he said the aura around him intensified and the divine dividing began to shine as Albion roared vanishing dragon balance breaker. The whole stadium was engulfed by a bright white light that caused everyone to cover their eyes. The flash of light soon condensed into the form of a figure wearing white draconic armor. The divine dividing on its back. And the yellow eyes staring down at Riser, Lord Phoenix was looking on in fear now. That's the forbidden move. How does he know that? Serzichas asked out. The power was rolling off Issei in tsunami waves. In this state, Serzichas did not doubt that Issei could give a few ultimate class devils a run for their money. He was low ultimate class level. Raphia was almost grinning ear to ear. With Issei's natural determination and the power that he possessed, she had little to no doubt that he would be able to break the shell that Lucy had created around her. He would free his sister of her chains and bring her back to her real self. 
and Issa would fill Grafia and Lucy with love. Serzicha spotted her uncharacteristic grin and sent her a questioning look to which she responded with a later. Nodding Serzicha's turned back to the fight where both the fighters were going to start round three, which would undoubtedly be the final round. Back in the fight feeling the power coming off Issa Riser began to chuckle and said well aren't you full of surprises. But you should know that it wasn't my clan's healing abilities. Now that the traps and techniques are out of the way it's a battle of stamina let's see if you can outlast a phoenix. As soon as finished talking he released his wings and flew up to Issei's level where both of them stared at each other. Soon both of them were covered in their respective auras and they were flying around the air clashing against each other. In the air streaks of blue and yellow were seen flying around and clashing like fireworks. Suddenly the auras broke and Issei punched Riser hard in the stomach, causing him to cough out blood a moment later Albion called out to Vite Issei, used a new influx of energy and channel it into a gauntlet, creating two spheres of bluish-white energy. He then threw them both at Riser who was still recovering in front of him in midair, the two spheres hit him dead on and he was sent hurtling into one of the arena walls. Riser came out of the debris and was panting as his phoenix regeneration started healing him. Issei on the other hand was starting to feel the effects of this long drawn out fight. The damage he took earlier in our fight. The damage he took earlier and the numerous divides were beginning to show their effect. He was panting in his armor as he thought to say. Damn this is getting tiring. I wonder how long can keep going. And that is what you get for screwing around and not being serious from the start. And to answer your question you can still maintain and fight for at least 5 hours. However, it's time to finish up our revenge is at hand. So Issei and Riser charged up their aura and attacked each other with everything they had, but Issei intentionally missed Riser and resigned, but made it look like Riser defeated him. Riaz was on the ground crying as she retired, from the moment the battle between Issei and Riser started Riaz had been laying on the ground. Chapter 11 Aftermath and Revenge Part 1 Elsewhere, Aisha. So this is our future husband, what do you think Aryuka? Aryuka. Well he definitely is strong he was able to give Riser an equal fight and I think he was holding back. Aisha. Hmm interesting we should know about him more before meeting him, what do you say? Ryuka. Yes I agree. Then. For those of you who don't know Ryuka is a smoutiest niece and Issei is engaged to he and Laisha Astaroth Ajuka Beals above niece. The Ipiram, Lord Phoenix. That truly was a marvelous fight it was close as well. Lady Phoenix. I agree that boy no young man is special he seems to have captured Ravella's and Ravel's hearts don't you agree Ravella? Ravella. Ha yeah I agree then it dawned on her that she had a deep blush and started failing her arms, wait no, I didn't mean it like that I meant the match. Lady Phoenix. Are you sure? Ravella. Mom. Lord Phoenix. It wouldn't be a bad thing he seems like a good person and he's quite powerful, the battle would have ended differently had he unlocked his Sparta side, but on the other hand Serzich's and Zexius are you alright I mean regarding Rhea's. Zexius. I am deeply disappointed, furious, and ashamed she has disgraced our clan, not only that she nearly traumatized a poor boy, and she openly admitted it, Serzich's. I am also disappointed but not just in her, but in but in myself, we spoiled her too much, and she could have driven Issei away from us and made him an enemy, or she could have caused him to use the juggernaut drive she deserves what's coming to her, I mean this as an older brother and faction leader, when my wife and son found out they were disappointed, I will have to do what I can to make it up to him, if there's one thing I'm sure of beyond doubt, it's that Issei is strong, I have a feeling he'll change the world, Zexius. I agree speaking of which Grafia you seem happier than usual, Grafia. I'll tell you and Lord Lucifer later it's something that will help repair relationships between Issei and the Gremory family. Zexius. Very well. Lady Phoenix. I was thinking perhaps we should adopt him since he doesn't have parents that's if he's okay with it. Lord Phoenix. I agree but does he have siblings? Riser. Yes he does. Lord Phoenix. Riser Ravel where did you come from? Riser. I came after checking on Issei he's resting and his body is nearly completely healed his dragon side is something else and I believe Issei would make a suitable husband for Ravel and Ravella. Ravel blushed even harder she had heard them talking about Issei marrying her and Ravella. Ravella. Baka. Lady Phoenix. Did you say he has siblings? Riser. Yes he has a foster sister her name is Leshig Weiber, he gave her his middle name due to her leaving her parents and she's currently Sona Citri Pawn per Issei's request. He then showed them a holographic picture of her. Ravel. She looks beautiful. Lord Phoenix. Yes she is, but we have things to attend to. Riser. Yes the wedding please tell Issei when he's awake he's more than welcome to come, and Ravella you haven't used your pawn pieces right. Ravella. Yes why? Riser. I'm giving Issei to you my peerage is full, and he doesn't want to be in Rhea's peerage. Ravella. But why he's yours you know how powerful he is. Riser. True but I plan to settle down for a while he could use someone like me, and vice versa besides I'll feel better knowing you're safe. Ravella. 
Riser thank you Ravella was deeply touched by Riser's words and kindness, his parents and the others were surprised as well, since Issei is pretty much the ultimate pawn, not to mention being a descendant of Sparta with untapped potential. Riser. Well I'm off he disappeared in a swirl of flames soon the rest of the Phoenix family follow suit with Issei. Issei woke up after one hour of resting, and when he did he was in the mindscape Albion had woke him up, and he was looking down towards his partner laying down on his back to the ground, his head on the lap of the beautiful girl who had a long curly black hair that extends down her back and dark blue eyes. She was wearing a red dress with golden accessories that showed her remarkably large breasts. The first thing that Issei saw when he opened his eyes were two dark blue eyes staring at him with a large smile on her face that made Issei happy. Issei then turned his head to see his partner in his full glory. That immediately told him that he was in his mind, where the white dragon could manifest his form. Now now Albion let him rest a little more like this, I'm enjoying seeing his face like this. The mysterious woman said as she started stroking his head gently. Issei. Albion what happened in the match? Who won? Issei was worried he went too far and accidentally beat Riser, he then noticed that his head was on the beautiful woman's lap, and who are you? The girl looked at the ancient dragon waiting for him to answer the boy's questions before she introduces herself to him. To answer your questions Issei, you put up a good fight out there, and I must say you're a grand actor, I'm pleased with how far you have gotten, and you resigned when Riser's attack hit you, and made it look like he knocked you no one knows but, had the fight continued you might have won, I'm proud of you so is Nero. Issei smiled he was glad Albion and Nero were of him they went a lot for him, especially when they he saw that she had a warm and soft smile on her face, her dark blue eyes shined in excitement. He blushed at seeing her. Well looks like you finally decided to turn your attention to me. The black-haired girl spoke in a soft and gentle voice. Issei. Why yes may I know who you are? He stuttered, blushing as he was mesmerized by her beauty. Of course. My name is Ulshara former wielder of divine dividing and the champion of the Slavic pantheon. Ulshara replied with a warm smile on her face. Issei. Nice to meet you Ulshara. My name is Issei Gwyber Sparta. But you can also call me Ice. Issei said with a blush on his face as he stood and bowed to her when she then gave him a little cute pout, but later giggle. If you foo I liked it more when your head was on my lap, but no later, it's nice to meet you finally. I heard from Albion and Nero a lot of things about you. Ulshara spoke as she also stood up giving Issei a good look at her. His face went crimson red at seeing her, to say that she was like a goddess on earth would be an understatement. Issei, Ulshara here is the strongest female user of the sacred gear, and the second strongest to wield it. Albion informed him as his eyes widened in shock that the person in front of him was that strong. Ufufuf, yes that's right Ice, they called me Abyss White Dragon, hence my hair. She told him with a smile. Issei was stunned. Before him stood one of the strongest users of the gear he now had. Her presence alone had placed an incredible amount of pressure on him, he was sure that she was suppressing her power a lot. Issei. By the way where's Nero? Sleeping like usual Sai I've got to get something for you two to do well make that three don't worry about it Issei we at least got Uno. By the way Rizer's Rukshulin is waiting on you, it's time to wake up ok thanks Albion, and it was nice to meet you Ulshara nice to meet you too I see you soon, she hugged him and pressed her breasts against his chest. Intentionally, making him hard as he felt the softness of her breasts through his dress, she smiled when she pulled away, while Issei had an atomic blush and left the mindscape. It would seem you've taken a liking to him maybe so he is very cute giggle. Outside Mindscape, Issei slowly opened his eyes and groaned then he sat and slowly sat up and was hugged by Shulin, it caught him a little off guard, but it made him happy, he rubbed her head. Issei. Hey Shulin it's good to see you. Shulin. It's good to see you too that was a good fight, how are you feeling master? Issei. Blushing I'm good um, so why exactly are you here? Shulin. Smirking isn't obvious you're my master I came to check on you and service your needs Issei blushed even harder, he started to have a nose bleed, besides Lord Riser sent me to take you home, your body may be healed, but your magic isn't at its fullest capability right now, I already took Kiba home, Issei. Trying to clear his head okay let's go he climbed out the bed and Shulin teleported him to the apartment when they arrived it was nighttime. Issei was still a little tired, but he was surprised when Shulin's bare breasts were touching his bare back, he was trying to figure out how and when did she remove his shirt and her shirt and bra. Then Shulin started rubbing her breasts against his back she moaned from the sensation of it the sound of her moaning and the sensation of her breasts made his hick rock hard he moaned in pleasure. Issei. Shulin what are you? Shulin. It's a servant's job to please her master I'm all yours master she nibbled on his ear, making him moan even louder he was trying to fight it, but his dragon instincts were telling him to turn around and strip her and buck her senseless, what are you waiting for master I've wanted you since we met, and when I saw your true form well, she started rubbing her hands on the area of his pants, where his hick was want to have some fun, Issei. I I I, Shulin. You want to ravage me? To take me the luddy servant that is craving for your semen right? 
Don't you want to dot you want to teach me the principle of supremacy, don't you want to dominate me giving up on the self-control that he had. Issei's mind turned to that of the beast wanting to take her down and buck her senseless. Why yes. He answered with a groan as Shulin's hand reached his boxers where his hick was covered. Softly running her hand through his boxers feeling his rock-hard stick, Shulin licked her lips a little loudly making Issei almost lose total control. He couldn't take it anymore he turned around and, I'm skip day of the wedding, Issei was getting ready for the wedding Shulin had already left, as he was putting on his white suit jacket, which was complemented by his baby blue the and shirt, and had streaks of silver which suited him well. He heard a knock on the door he went to open it, and his jaw dropped. He saw his sister Lesha she wore a beautiful dress like this, it hugged her gifted chest to the point where her breasts were begging to be let free, but at the same time it was not too tight, and she wore a silver and blue bracelet, and a silver dragon shaped hairpin. Issei was speechless not just because of how beautiful she looked, but because his dragon instincts were telling him to rip that dress off of her and buck her, but he managed to fight them with some help from Alshara, Albion and Nero decided not to. Lesha. Blushing um do I look okay, I hope you like it Momo help me pick it out. Issei shook his head to get control of himself, Issei. Blushing you look great, sorry I didn't mean to embarrass you, you just caught me off, guard, Lesha. Blushing thanks you look good too are you ready to go, Issei. Yo yeah, oh, before I forget if there's anyone bothering you, especially guys don't hesitate to tell me so I can put them into their place, I refuse to let some random guy hit on you, Lesha. Blushing even harder as sure thing and I saw the fight yesterday it was good, Issei. Thanks let go grab Kiba knock knock Kiba you ready, Kiba. Yeah coming out, Issei. You look good bro clap on the shoulder, Lesha. I agree, Kiba. Thanks let's go. So Issei shut the buck up perverted dragon, so the trio teleported to the wedding meanwhile, with Rias, Rias. Ugh this is an engagement party so then why the hell am I in a wedding dress? Riser. Because I wanted it, Riser said as he appeared in a vortex of fire. Rias. What happened to your ridiculous speech? Are sure the Riser didn't want this, maid? No lord Riser you mustn't it's bad luck, Riser. Please don't worry I only need a word with my lady and I'll be out momentarily besides it's not like anything can go wrong tonight. You are a beautiful bride, my love, Rias. I'm not your love, Riser. Oh on the contrary, and as for your questions it was decided to skip the engagement party, and I'd marry you tonight, also as for my way of speaking, I no longer speak that way as it's no longer needed I'm closer to achieving my goal. And there's nothing you can do about it, Rias. I'm not your lover bride yet my brother will stop this, so what's with the dress? Riser. What's with the dress? I just want you to make a good impression on our esteemed guests my dear, after all, we need to demonstrate to the world that our two houses have halfway joined together right, Rias. What do you mean half joined? And my brother will stop you, Riser. Ha 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 What's so funny, Riser? You really are a fool Riaz and you're far too arrogant, I'll admit I'm quite arrogant too, but not as much as you, and I actually have a brain in fact the fight with Issei actually humbled me a bit. Allow me to show you, ladies will one of you please show Riaz the rating game, the part where I challenged Issei, they did hold it right there now play it, Riaz. Issei how dare you agree without my consent all of this is your fault I wouldn't be in this situation if you would have just taken my virginity like I asked, Issei. And let you grate me no thanks, I'm saving my heart for another woman besides it's not against the rules I have the right to accept or decline, Riser. Oh and by the way this was live the whole supernatural saw it, Ria's eyes widened her dumb ass was so angry and so arrogant that she didn't realize what she said, neither had she taken the time to review the rating game before it began, had she done that she would have known it was live, and the whole supernatural those that were watching saw it, Riser. So you see not only does the whole supernatural know what you did to Issei who is a descendant of Sparta whose descendants are feared, respected, and welcomed across the supernatural. But so does your family, and due to what happened in the club room that day when Issei attacked you, Grafi reported it to Serzich's so he knows about it, and so does the council and the other three devil kings, and they more than likely dug deeper, Issei being the white dragon emperor is one thing, so you can imagine how they reacted when they found out he was a Sparta. Especially since the three factions would do anything to have a Sparta on their side and keep them there. Rhea started shaking in fear as Riser's words penetrated her dung beetle-sized thinking brain she knew she had screwed up big time, but Riser wasn't done. Riser. I see you're taking it all in good, by exposing yourself you've not only disgraced and dishonored and shamed yourself, but also your family, you're more than likely hated not just by devils and the through factions, but by the whole supernatural. As a result, your family is disowning you and stripping you of your title as heir to the house of Gremory. Your brother is not helping you it's over, Rias. No they can't why you're bluffing besides this whole marriage will be pointless, Riser. No it won't you're a pure-blooded devil, so there's some worth there, and you're still a descendant of the house of Gremory, and still the heir for now, so our houses will be halfway joined, though it will appear to be fully joined until you're stripped of your title. 
and you're not needed to join the houses together, your parents obviously blame themselves for your actions and will want to make things up to say, Milikas will lose respect for you, and you more than likely won't be able to see him for a while, making him a bit lonely and sad, also Issei doesn't have any parents, and so they'll more than likely try to adopt him. My family was already considering it on the off chance he doesn't marry one of my sisters, but regardless of him being adopted by your family or mine Issei is the bridge that will join our houses, and if not him his sister. Not to mention Issei will more than likely be granted his own clan the House of Sparta, strengthening both houses, either way, it's a win-win-win and you're not needed. Rhea started crying she realized she bucked up big time, and there was nothing she could do, and her own family her own flesh and blood were just tossing her away. Rhea's. They can't they can't just throw me away for that boy he just happened to be lucky and be gifted the sacred gear divine dividing, he hasn't even fully unlocked his Sparta side and probably never will stupid bitch. Even if that was the case besides the point. Riser she's too arrogant she's really getting on my nerves. I can't wait to put her in her place regardless there's nothing you can do. And Issei is far more valuable than you. Compared to Issei he's a devil king. And you're a piece of low class shit that came out of a low class disgusting horrid straight devil. Rias. This is all your fault you did something you convinced Issei to. Riser. I didn't do anything and even if I did Issei hates you and would do anything to be free of you, I challenged him to a duel and he lost though he nearly beat me, I won fair and square Urias never stood a chance as I already stated I was near low ultimate class and that fight caught the attention of everyone in the underworld as a result I've been promoted an ultimate class, devil, Urias. You're lying you. Riser released his aura using only a small portion of it due to the maids being there and they were having trouble breathing and Rias was no better, Riser. As you can see I'm way out of your league Rias, and unlike you I don't rely on my magic, my family name, or my older brothers to get me out of a jam I actually train, and I'm smart something you don't do and ain't. Oh, by the way, I'm removing Issei, Kiba, and the fallen bitch from your peerage, Rias. You can't, Riser. You brought this in yourself Rias you shouldn't have looked down on Issei or become his enemy, you ruined everything for yourself, hence your name ruined princess, Rias. You fried chicken bastard, slap, Riser. Don't you dare speak to me like that after what you've done to say you have no right you belong to me bitch. Rias was silent. Riser. Good, I can and I am going to take them one. You and the other Lutz in your peerage would just try to torture them or aggravate them to the point of insanity, and the last thing anyone needs is Issei using the juggernaut drive. 2. You'd hinder their growth. 3. They'll go on to do great things, and you don't deserve credit for those things seeing as true since you're their master, then whatever achievement that they receive earn might go mostly to you, since you're their master as a result I'm taking them away, not like you'll need them anyways. And as for the fallen lot she'll be Issei's gift for doing well against me, and so he can exact his revenge against her, she'll be his slave. Well, I've wasted enough of my precious time see you in the wedding hall. Oh snap, he turned her dress into one of flaming feathers and left leaving a broken Rias who swore to get revenge on Issei, Riser, and Kiba she swore on the Gremory name which is no longer hers, but Serzich's and Zexius. Serzich's, Grafia and Zexius arrived at the Gremory mansion to get ready for the wedding, when they arrived in the living room they found Venelana, Miasera, and Milikas ready, they decided to talk to Grafia about what she said regarding fixing relationships between the house of Gremory and Issei. Serzich's. So Grafia what do you have planned that will fix the relationship between our clan and Issei? Zexius. I'm curious as well. Hearing this Benelana Miasera and Milikas gave Grafia their full attention. Grafia. Well you remember that I said Issei confessed his feelings for me, and I feel the same way, and I believe things could work out. They nodded. Grafia. Good I gave him two conditions for him to fulfill, the first being to fully forgive his sister Lesha and the second to help free Lucy from her shell. Serzich's and Zexius did a spit take and looked at her like she was crazy, Milikas felt a little happy he's met Lucy a few times, and they get along pretty well she's like a real older sister to him. While Venelana and Mia Sarah were contemplating if this was a good idea, then they realized what Grafia was doing, she was pairing Issei and Lucy together, and due to Lucy and Grafia being close to the Gremory before and after the Civil War, it would fix things between Issei and them. Not to mention it would make it easier to adopt him. Venelana. I think it's a great idea, Mia Sarah. So do I. Zexius. You can't be serious you'll kill the poor boy. Serzich's. I agree I think we should. Venelana Mia Sarah. Shut the hell up. Venelana. Serzich's and Zexius you better shut your asses up before we kick both of your sorry asses. I know what I'm doing call it a mother's intuition. I've never been wrong about these things look at you and Mia Sarah. You can't keep your hands off each other. Whether you like it or not, Issei is marrying Lucy. And Lucy has been alone for too long. It's time to break her out of that shell understood. They both nodded in fear hugging each other. They didn't know who was worse their wives or Lucy. Grafia's sister she was not someone you wanted to face or piss off Milikas on the other hand. Silently sighed in an instant he remembered how harsh and sadistic his mother and grandmother can be. He was glad to not be in his father or grandfather's place. 
So Serzichas and Zexius hurried upstairs and changed not wanting to incur their wives' wrath. Time skip. Issei, Lesha, and Kiba arrived at the Phoenix mansion where the wedding was taking place when they walked towards the door, and the guard saw them. When in the underworld Issei doesn't hide his true form, they immediately opened the door for Issei upon recognizing him and being informed by Riser beforehand. As they walked in they saw many devils there, food and drinks on the tables Issei and Kiba wanted to try some wine. But before they could even touch a glass, Lesha smacked their hands down, they wanted to retort especially Issei. But Lesha gave him a stern look it had been years since she used it, and it sent shivers up his spine, reminding him she is still his big sister, whether he liked it or not. Kiba laughed, saying how the mighty white dragon emperor submitted to his sister Issei, stepped on his foot, it took all of Kiba's strength not to yell. Then some female devils recognized Issei and started gossiping among themselves, which would soon spread across the room, Issei quickly caught on and let out a roar as Riser instructed. It caught everyone's attention especially the Phoenix family, Shulin hearing Issei located him and went towards them, Riser asked her to look after Lesha to avoid any problems he'd rather not have one or several of the guests go flying across the room. Riser stopped talking to one of the guests and flew to Issei. Riser. Issei glad you could make it. Issei. Me too. Riser. Everyone this is Issei Gwyber Sparta he is also the white dragon emperor. The crowd cheered especially the female devils the male devils were jealous of Issei it was during this time Ravella walked up. Riser. Issei, Kiba, and Lesha please meet my sisters Ravel and Ravella. She's a little bit younger than me and you've already met Ravel. She's a year younger than you. Ravella. It's nice to meet you Issei Sparta. Issei. It's nice to meet you too Ravella and there's no need for formalities you can call me a say or ice he said with a smile, making Ravella blush, while Lord and Lady Phoenix were grinning while watching their interaction, why the hell do I feel a piece of my sacred gear on her? Ah you noticed it too I'm not sure, but I advise you to be careful got it, Ravella. Blushing sure and you must be Kiba and Lesha nice to meet you, Kiba I was impressed by your sword skills and strength, Lesha. It's nice to meet you, Kiba. Thanks but it's nothing compared to you with or without Graham, but I'll surpass you one day. Ravella. I look forward to it. Riser. Issei I'd like for you to meet my parents let's go while they talk and don't worry Shulin will look after her so Lesha isn't bothered. Issei. Thanks let's go. Riser. Mother, father I've brought Issei Sparta. Issei. Hello it's a pleasure to meet you Lord Phoenix and you as well Lady Phoenix. Lord Phoenix. It is a pleasure to meet you as well you gave Riser quite a fight, despite being classified as a low-ranking devil, not having fully unlocked your Sparta side and being a devil for only one month. Lady Phoenix. Yes it was indeed a magnificent fight I never imagined meeting an actual descendant of Sparta. Issei. I am honored with your praise and it's good to meet you. While Issei Riser and his parents were discussing things Riaz was watching as Riser, Kiba, and Issei were enjoying themselves at her expense, misery and suffering especially Issei, Riser, and without Rainer Akeno and Kaneko, it made her sick to her core she was furious and she wanted nothing more but to hurt them, especially Issei. Then she saw her chance when she looked at Lesha, but before she could do anything she saw the Gremory family circle she inwardly cursed their timing, she'd have to do it after the marriage she was even more furious, then she looked at her family, and they didn't look for her. Milikas was speaking with Ravli making him 12 years old, she saw her mother and father speaking Lord Phoenix and Lady Phoenix, then she saw something that shocked her, she saw Serzichas had arrived so did Serafal, and they were speaking to some council men and laughing which they never did. Riser clicked his glass with his spoon several others followed, it was a sign that the wedding was about to end, Riaz was then forcefully teleported as Riser spoke. Riser. Greetings renowned devils of the underworld on behalf of the House of Phoenix, I would like to thank each and every one of you for coming today, this is a historic moment for the world of devils, and I what are dear guests to witness. Two great dynasties are about to become one, I Lord Riser of the distinguished House of Phoenix, shall wed Lady Bitch Riaz of the illustrious House of Gremory, and now I present to you my bit bride Riaz Gremory, imagine her dress being on fire, as the attendants started saying the marriage shit Riaz had no choice but to answer, but during it all Riaz glances towards her family, her mother gave her a death glare that promised pain and suffering, her father frowned, Mia Sarah shook her head, Milikas looked away, and lastly, the person she thought would her no matter what just stared at her like he was peering into her luddy soul, it sent shivers up her spine, and her eyes started to water, realizing what Riser said was true Issei was smiling throughout the whole thing. Then when it was time for them to kiss Riaz and Riser learned and Riaz shed a few tears, she didn't want to give up her old life, until Riser forced her into the kiss, everyone cheered, and while no one was looking she cried some more, but quickly dried her tears, then the Gremory family went to talk to Issei. Graphia. Hello Issei. Issei. Hey Graphia how are you? Graphia. Good Lord Lucifer and his family would like to speak with you. Issei. Okay sure. Serzichas. My name is Serzichas Lucifer Ria's brother it's nice to meet you. Mia Sarah. This is our son Milikas. Milikas. It's nice to meet you. Zexius. My name is Zexius Ria's father. Then Alana. 
My name is Benalana it's nice to meet you I'm Ria's mother, I say. It's nice to meet you as well especially you little guy, and hold up you're her parents, is anxious. Is something wrong? I say. Well no actually I just thought you were Ria's siblings, I sure to laugh with that, Benalana. No I say you flatter us, but we devils can control our appearance, and we hardly age, I say. I see my bad, Serzich's. No harm done. Then Issei walked closer to Milikas and squatted to his height. Issei. You said your name is Milikas, right? You're a good looking guy, and you're well well mannered and respectful I like that, and I can tell with enough hard work you'll surpass your father. Milikas. Stars in his eyes really. Issei. Yes I can feel your aura you have immense destructive energy, you don't need to exactly know a person or see them fight aura is all you need if you can read it right. Milikas. Wow Aura is so cool, indeed it is young one, Milikas jumped back a bit he hadn't met her expected Albion, please forgive me I didn't mean to startle you my name is Albion I'm Issei's brother, as you know I'm known as the vanishing dragon, I'm also the white dragon emperor, there's no need to be afraid I won't hurt you, Milikas. It's nice to meet you Albion what were you saying about Aura? Aura is the manifestation of one soul, every living being has one, and is considered extremely powerful if used properly. For instance, an aura-based attack is a million times stronger than a magic-based attack, the only problem is that most races including gods, have a small limited amount of aura. The main reason why dragons are so powerful and dangerous is not because of our claws, size, physical strength, or breath attacks, it is because we have an abundance of aura, in which most of our attacks are based on our aura. But, there comes a time depending on the dragon when their aura evolves corresponding to their souls which grant special properties that can make most gods envious of us, usually a dragon awakens their aura either by going through an extremely emotional event or their awakening over time through training. My aura is the aura of supremacy which gave me the power of divine dividing, and so on, while Drag's aura is the aura of domination which gave him the power boost transfer, and so on. Only four dragons in existence have been able to awaken their auras, those dragons are Great Red, Office, Me, and Drag. Milikas. That's so cool do you think I can unlock my aura someday? It's a possibility. Milikas. Wait to say Albion said he's your brother what does he mean by that? Issei revealed his dragon wings they were so beautiful that they caught the attention of the other guests. Issei. I'm part dragon a dragon devil demon human hybrid, although I only retain a small part of my humanity, before being reincarnated by your aunt I was half breed a demon human hybrid, but I wasn't aware of my demon heritage, even after becoming a devil, and even if I had been I needed more strength more power thus, I let Albion turn me into a dragon, and since I contain his DNA that makes us brothers, and before you ask yes, I can unlock my aura someday, and someday Albion's abilities will be mine, regardless of unlocking my aura, Milikas. You're really cool Issei can I have your autograph, Issei? Sure, so Issei autographed a photo Milikas had of him, the Grimmery family was happy to see Issei and Milikas getting along so well, even Albion seemed to like him, and Grafia noticed how good he was with kids she started to think about her and Issei having kids, but the Grimmery family felt a little sad as they remembered one of the reasons they came to talk to Issei. Issei. Here you go, Milikas. Thanks but one more thing, Issei. Sure thing what is it, Milikas. Can I see your demon arms and take a photo, Miyasera. Milikas, Issei. It's fine I don't mind. So Issei summoned his demon arms Milikas, and the Grimmery family was in awe, and so were the guests they saw it during the raiding game, but not up close, and Issei let Milikas take photos. Milikas. Thank you Issei. Issei. No problem, but I have to talk to your parents now if you want you can talk to my sister she loves kids, and she's very nice. Milikas. Okay. Milikas ran off towards Lesha Issei, smiled Milikas reminded him of himself when he was younger. Serzichas. Thank you for that Issei Milikas has been in love with the legends of Sparta since he first heard them when he was younger, so meeting you was a dream come true, Issei. I know how he feels he reminds me of myself when I was younger before my life turned into a piece of shit, so don't let this world taint him he doesn't deserve it, Miyasera. We'll be sure to make sure it doesn't happen, Raphia. I see you fulfilled one of the conditions I tasked you with, Issei. Yeah but I still have to talk to Lesha, and I plan on taking her out somewhere, but let's to the chase I know you didn't come all this way just to meet me. Zexious. Straight to the point we can respect that, yes you're right the reason we're here is, Issei. I don't want to hear it, Bremery family. Huh? Issei. I don't want to hear your apology because you did nothing wrong. Serzichas. But we, Issei. Spoiled Rias even though your wives told you not to, I'm well aware I can tell by the fact that you two are the first to apologize, but had it been the other way around, it would have been your wives apologizing first. Also, Riser informed me of what happened after the raiding game, and I can tell by your auras lastly you're not coming acting all high and mighty, especially you Serzichas being the Devil King Lucifer, also you didn't mind me spending time with Milikas, even though it was for a short while. 
you didn't do anything wrong sure you spoiled her, but you tried your hardest to instill morality, virtue, dignity, respect, and intelligence into her the sad face that she didn't grasp it is no one's fault but her own. So stop feeling sorry for yourself everything that happened is Rhea's fault and Rhea's alone I do hate Rhea's, but I do not hate the Gremory family. The Grimmery family was in awe at Issei's words to think that a boy his age possessed such wisdom and understanding, they could only imagine what he would be like when he was older. And to think that he didn't blame them even though they did, and he just lectured him despite being older, having more experience, and being more powerful, especially Serzich's. Then Alana. Those were some very wise words Issei it's rare for a young man your age to possess such, thank you for showing us how foolish we were being, Issei. You're welcome and you weren't being foolish it's natural for parents to feel bad for their children's mistakes and try to correct them if the child can't or won't, boom explosion, Issei. Lesha Milikas, Lemon, Issei slowly opened his eyes and groaned then he sat and slowly sat up and was hugged by Shulin, it caught him a little off guard, but it made him happy, he rubbed her head. Issei. Hey Shulin it's good to see you, Shulin. It's good to see you too that was a good fight, how are you feeling master, Issei. Blushing I'm good um, so why exactly are you here, Shulin. Smirking isn't obvious you're my master I came to check on you and service your needs Issei blushed even harder, he started to have a nose bleed, besides Lord Riser sent me to take you home, your body may be healed, but your magic isn't at its fullest capability right now, I already took Kiba home, Issei. Trying to clear his head okay let's go he climbed out the bed and Shulin teleported him to the apartment when they arrived it was night time. Issei was still a little tired, but he was surprised when Shulin's bare breasts were touching his bare back, he was trying to figure out how and when did she remove his shirt and her shirt and bra. Then Shulin started rubbing her breasts against his back she moaned from the sensation of it the sound of her moaning and the sensation of her breasts made his hickrock heart he moaned in pleasure. Issei. Shulin what are you? Shulin. It's a servant's job to please her master I'm all yours master she nibbled on his ear, making him moan even louder he was trying to fight it, but his dragon instincts were telling him to turn around and strip her and buck her senseless, what are you waiting for master I've wanted you since we met, and when I saw your true form well, she started rubbing her hands on the area of his pants where his hick was wont to have some fun, lemon skip please read it on website, after that Shulin passed out Issei wrapped his hands around her soft body and pulling her close. He noticed that Shulin was now old cold. He then pulled her into his chest and covered them both before he let sleep overtake him. The next day Issei would get ready for Riser's wedding. Chapter 12 Aftermath and Revenge Part 2 Issei. Lesha Milikas. A loud explosion was heard when the dust settled everyone saw Lesha holding Milikas behind her she was trying to protect him and there was a barrier in place that was created by Milikas however, in the event Milikas barrier not been strong enough, Lesha's hairpin would have created one. As they were walking into the room where the wedding was taking place Issei discreetly put some of his power into the hairpin to protect Lesha in case something happened and he couldn't reach her in time and it just so happened that Issei wasn't near her and neither was Shulin. As Shulin, the Gremory, and the Phoenix family ran towards Lesha, Milikas, everyone was trying to figure out what had happened. Issei was focusing on the aura wavelength, trying to figure out where the attack came from it was heavily masked, but even so, Issei managed to track the origin of the attack, when he did he gave off a bloodlusting aura that sent shivers up everyone's spine, except the more powerful devils, Lesha, and Milikas who was clinging to her, he may have been brave to put up the barrier, but he was still scared. Then Issei released Divine Dividing and took off at an incredible speed so fast the only thing everyone saw was a streak of white light everyone except Serzich's, the Gremory family excluding Milikas, the Phoenix family excluding Ravel, Seraphal, and the Council. Issei charged at Rhea she was the one who launched the attack, Issei attacked her so fast she couldn't react, he hit her in the gut, making her cough up blood and spit, gave her several vicious haymakers, drop kicked her damaging her face, last but not least he dragonified his left arm and activated his right demon arm punched Rhea's and the stomach again, this time with much more force, then he flew up with his fist still in her stomach, smashing her into the ceiling, then he spun fast while he flew down and slammed her into the ground, breaking several of her bones. She couldn't move it all happened so fast that she didn't have time to register what was happening, but she did now screamed in agony and felt ice and fire surge through her body, courtesy of Issei putting magic into his attacks, which were now taking effect torturing her. But Issei wasn't done he grabbed Rias by her leg and slammed her into the ground at high speeds, adding more velocity and more force each time, slammed her into the ground, he wanted to keep going Lesha was very precious to him, and Rias crossed the line when she decided to harm Lesha he then proceeded to punch her in the face serial times each time he divided her strength, then he kicked in her head and stepped on her head with as much strength as possible, making blood fall from it, after that be he formed an ice dagger stabbed her in the gut and slammed her into the ground, Rias screamed so loud it broke some of the glass in the room, and she coughed up about a gallon of blood, but Issei was still furious. 
Issei, I who shall awaken am, the heavenly dragon who lost all to the principle. Issei snap out of it, don't let your rage and hatred consume you Nero. Come on Issei you know you're better than this. Please calm down Issei think of everyone around you, Shulin. Issei look they are both alright please snap out of it. Shulin hugged Issei tightly she'd never seen him like this before, but she knew about the juggernaut drive, and all she wanted was for Issei to return to normal Issei saw Lesha unharmed next to the Grimmery family and the Phoenix family, Issei walked towards Lesha, then Lesha saw Issei they ran towards each other and hugged each other tightly. Issei. You're okay, Lesha. Yes I'm fine don't worry, Issei. I'm sorry I didn't mean to scare you sniff sniff it's it's just I lost someone already, because I wasn't strong enough and I couldn't save her, I panicked when Rias tried to attack you, I don't want to lose you, I I love you Lesha, I forgive you for everything I'm sorry. Lesha was speechless for a moment Issei finally said the word she longed to hear for so long, he loves her and forgives her Lesha cried into Issei's shoulder, but they weren't tears of sadness they were tears of joy. Lesha. I love you too Issei thank you. They hugged each other tightly the devils in the room felt happy and touched by the interaction between the two siblings, husbands grabbed their wives hands or hugged them. Grafia was happy to see the bond between them repaired and if she wasn't convinced before she had no doubt Issei would free Lucy from her shell. Biba shed some tears he was also happy to see them together as siblings, it was truly a heartfelt moment imagine it like this. Milikas. Sniff sniff that's so sweet. Mia Sarah. Yes indeed true love. Riser. Crying damned you too you're breaking my heart. Ravel. Crying, there's nothing better than true love. Ravella was touched by the interaction as well she and Ravella didn't know it yet, but they started falling for him, and of course Seraphil was crying too Lord Phoenix, and Lady Phoenix smiled as they held each other hand, they hoped to say would become their son-in-law. Albion, Nero, and Elshara were happy too. Serzich's Rias how could you be so dense? Then Alana Rias truly was a fool to just toss away a gem like Issei it doesn't matter if he's not the descendant of Sparta, the white dragon emperor, or a devil he has a heart of gold, it's a shame Rias couldn't realize it. And after everything she and those Lutz put him through she had the nerve to go after his sister, when it's obvious he loves her dearly, she deserves what happened to her. After four minutes Issei and Lesha finally broke apart from the hug everyone was smiling. But then they remembered the stupid spoiled bitch Rias who tried to hurt Lesha and Milikas, Venelana and Mia Sara walked towards Rias who was still laying on the ground barely conscious. Venelana. You there hell Rias now. As Venelana and Mia Sara walked towards Rias Venelana ordered Rainer to heal Rias. Venelana. You there heal Rias now. Rainer. And me. Venelana. You possess twilight healing do you not? Rainer nodded not wanting to incur Venelana's, and Mia Sarah's wrath quickly ran towards Rias to heal her after a little while Rias was finally healed, and she slowly regained her consciousness, when she was fully conscious, she found herself begin helped up by Venelana Rias no stood in her feet, Rias. Mother thank you I. Slap Venelana slapped Rias several times, and each time she did it, she has her hands coated in a thin layer of the power of destruction, destroying pieces of Rias face, Rias. Ah my face my beautiful face it hurts it hurts. Rhea screamed in pain holding her face it looked like this. But Mia Sarah wasn't about to let Rhea's get any rest she punched Rhea several times in the face, backhanded her twice, drop kicked her, bullet punched her, then grabbed her by her throat and slammed her into the ground, knocking the wind out of Rhea she squirmed and could hardly breathe due to her being chocked just when she thought she was about to die. Mia Sarah let her go. Rhea's felt relieved thinking it was over, but that was a mistake Mia Sarah broke both of her arms while Venelana broke both of her legs. Somewhere else, Nora. Someone's legs got broken perhaps I should go join them too, Bren. Huh. Back to DXD. Here we see Rhea's being tortured and healed continuously her body was twisted in all the wrong places and she could hardly breathe, she'd never felt so much pain in her life, and the fact that it came from he mother and supposed sister-in-law made it worse, either way. It was a grim sight, but no one tried to stop or wanted to stop them, even if someone did they'd be afraid to face the wrath of Issei Venelana and Mia Sarah. As the torture went on, Issei noted Venelana and Mia Sarah were not to be messed with, despite being a devil he inwardly prayed to whatever deity he knew that Grafia Lucy and Shulin wouldn't be like them, while Serzich's, Zexus, and Milikas were once again reminded ain't no hell like a woman's furry and not to piss off Venelana and Mia Sarah. The torture lasted for about 30 minutes then when they felt satisfied they stopped, but the torture would continue later on Rias was healed partially and was forced to stand up, but the lower of her dress was yellow due to her pissing herself. Rias. W-Y, why are you doing this, Mia Sarah? Don't try to play dumb you nearly hurt Lesha and killed Milikas. Rias. What? Venelana. Slap don't play dumb with us it happened when you fired that attack which we assume was to hurt Lesha, since you can't hurt Issei. It was now time for Serzich's to step up not as an older brother or son, but as the devil king Lucifer. Serzich's. Rias why were you trying to attack Lesha she did nothing. Rias. Because it's not fair I've done nothing but be a good master to Issei, and he betrayed me it's his fault I married to Riser, it's all his fault he's even happy about this I saved him. Then. 
Even if Ria's head and Kamase would have survived. Ria's was yelling and stomping her foot like a child. Everyone looked at her like you can't e s e r i o u s and y b and y b and y b and y b and shook their heads. Venelana and Zexius were feeling disappointed by the minute. Serzich's was about to speak, but Issei cut in. Issei. Are you bucking kidding me goof master my ass? You're the worst master to ever exist bitch, you've been nothing but good to me. Then watch this Albion. Using the wings from Divine Dividing Albion showed Issei's memories regarding Issei and Rhea's peerage from him being killed up to the raiding game when he was finished. Everyone was furious they were giving Rhea's death glares, especially Lesha, Sona, the Gremory, and Phoenix Mansion. The Isera. You're disgusting and pathetic Rias you caused an innocent boy to die because of your incompetence and laziness. You abused him because you had a problem, and instead of solving it like a reasonable adult, you took it out on him like a child throwing a tantrum, then your incompetence caused another person to die, and instead of reviving her, you forced the fallen angel to become your servant. All you so could beat Riser, which you failed no one in your peerage stood a chance against Riser, and his peerage except a say in Kiba. If you think you managed to take down some of Riser's peace during the game you're wrong, he let you think you defeated defeated them, so he could crush your spirit. You've got a lot of nerve saying what's unfair, and you mean about the engagement for years, yet you did nothing about it, you didn't train your peerage or yourself proof of that is the rating game, and the fact that my 12 year old son was strong enough to easily stop your attack, you understand how weak you are. You are even weaker than the weakest of Riser's peerage. You just think yourself to be a big shot, but you are nothing but the lowest among everyone here I am ashamed that I once thought of you as my little sister. And the reason why he was able to easily block your attack is that I've been making sure he trains, I've seen firsthand how you are, and wanted to make sure he didn't end up a spoiled brat like you however, I did hope you change, but I see that hope was misplaced. Then Alana. Ria's I am ashamed to be called your mother you are a disgrace to the Grimory family and name and all devils, I regret having a daughter like you, I regret giving birth to you, she turned towards Issei and Lesha Issei and Lesha, we are sorry for what my shit of a daughter did, I understand both of you don't have parents, and if you ever need a mother I'd readily become yours, and we'd be willing to adopt you on your consent of course, Issei and Lesha looked, and the other members of the Grimory family nodded in agreement, especially Milika's, who wanted to spend more time with him and Lesha. Issei thought about it for a moment they weren't like Ria's or worse, and Lesha could use some parents so could he, but he didn't want to admit it. Issei. We appreciate the offer, but we'd like to consider it. Lesha. I agree. Lord Phoenix. Whisper looks like they might beat us to the punch. Lady Phoenix. Whisper perhaps but don't worry things will work out call it a woman's intuition. Lady Phoenix was already aware that Ravella and Ravel started to develop feelings for Issei, and she was going to make sure they got together. Then Alana. And as for your punishment Ria's I haven't decided yet, but regardless Issei will also decide your punishment, it can be anything except death. Ria's was stunned she couldn't believe her family was tossing her away for Issei and Lesha. But then she remembered what Riser said your parents blame themselves for your actions and will want to make things up to Issei, Milika's will lose respect for you, and you more than likely won't be able to see him for a while making him a bit lonely and sad. Also Issei doesn't have any parents and so they'll more than likely try to adopt him. My family was already considering it on the off chance he doesn't marry one of my sisters, but regardless of him being adopted by your family or mine Issei is the bridge that will join our houses and if not him his sister. Not to mention Issei will more than likely be granted his own clan the House of Sparta, strengthening both houses, either way, it's a win-win-win and you're not needed. Rias. Father I. Zexius. Silence we plan to do this discreetly and make it known later, but there's no point in doing so anymore. Isaacius Grimory as the head of the House of Grimory, hereby banish you from the House of Grimory, and you are hereby stripped of your title as the heir to the House of Grimory, which will now be handed to Milikas, and we disown you as a daughter. Rhea's heart was shattered to a trillion pieces everything Riser said came to pass, she started to cry everything was taken from her in a flash, and the only thing she had left was her powers and ego. Rhea's. Sniff sniff could it get any worse. Life yeah I can bitch dead god Lucifer. She is really stupid I agree is disown her as one of my descendants. And. Word of I advise folks don't be stupid like Rhea's and say things like it can't get any worse or ask things like could it get any worse, because you know it can, and if you do it's like you're begging for things to get worse like you're begging life to slap you in the face and say yeah it can. She then turned to face his brother who had a serious expression on his face, it showed no sympathy or remorse, she knew things were about to get worse. Serzich's. Rhea's formerly known as Rhea's Grimory I as the great devil King Lucifer, hereby banish you from the underworld, unless ask ever a member of the Phoenix family summons you to that end, you are hereby charged with making an enemy of the White Dragon Emperor, trying to grape the White Dragon Emperor as Gwyber Sparta, attempting to kill Lesha Gwyber his sister along with my son Milika's Grimory, now the heir to the House of Grimory. 
your power of destruction will be sealed, and so will the rest of your magic, except for a few self-defense spells and teleportation. Rias cried even more as she turned to the one person who she hoped could convince them to change their minds Milikas. But Milikas simply turned away he was still a bit frightened by what happened he never expected the one he loved and called his aunt to try and hurt him. Serzich stepped forward and sealed Rhea's power she was no more powerful than a low-ranking devil. After this Rhea's completely broke down in tears she lost everything her ego and self-respect were destroyed, only her stubbornness remained, not wanting to see this bitch cry, Riser sent her to his room, where he had pre-ordered the guards to tie her up. The others were happy to see her go. Issei walked over to Milika's bent down and hugged him, Issei. Milika's thank you for protecting Lesha, I truly appreciate it, Milika's. It's no problem I was only doing what was right. But to be honest I still feel a little scared, Issei. Is that so? Then Milikas listened carefully these are words my brother once told me. Power is nothing without might, serious might controls everything, without strength you can't protect anyone, let alone yourself, cause you see Milikas before you can learn to gain the power to protect your loved ones, you must first gain the power to protect yourself because the only person that can protect you is you. True power lies not only in one's strength and might, but one's way of being remember this okay. Milikas. Okay I will I promise, but what's with Lesha's hairpin I feel strong magic coming from it, and who's your brother, Issei. As we entered the wedding hall I discreetly poured some magic into it so that it would protect her in the event something happened to her, but it wasn't needed as you were there to protect her, I thank you for that also I'm sure you're wondering why did I go on a slight rampage and brutally attack Rias. It's because as you already saw I lost Asia and I didn't want to lose Lesha too, and I happened to forget that I placed a barrier on the hairpin due to what was going on, but even so that's no excuse. Milikas it's important to treasure and protect the ones you care about, even if it means giving up your life, I would gladly give up my life for Lesha and Kiba, a wise woman with beautiful hair, who once showed me the value of family and how precious it is. As for my brother, it was none other than Nero Sparta, everyone except Kiba and Lesha. Nero Sparta, the devils in the room were shocked to hear such wisdom come from Issei's mouth, the parts that weren't from Nero, and the fact that Nero and Issei spoke, but then again, it would help explain Issei's strength, and being able to turn two of his arms of that into a true devil, Milikas. You've met Nero Sparta you mean he's alive, Issei. Sadly no, I've got to meet him because he was the former white dragon emperor before I was chosen, but he's been training me, Milikas. That's awesome Issei, and I promise to never forget your word someday I'll catch up to you, Issei. I look forward to it it'll be a battle for the ages. Me the strongest white dragon emperor and descendant of Sparta versus Milikas the strongest devil in history even stronger than Lucifer himself, I know you'll catch up, I sense great potential and you don't let me down Milikas get strong, Milikas. I will Issei. The devils in the room smiled at the interaction between Issei and Milikas, especially the Gremory and Phoenix family, however they were also curious if Issei was right, would Milikas surpass Urzichas, and how strong would he be? The council and Seraphal were also interested they were interested in the futures of both these young men to them, and others they were the hope of this generation, the hope of the future, Serzichas. Issei would you please come with me some people would like to meet you, Lesha and Kiba can come too, Issei. Sure, see you later Milikas come on Lesha and Kiba, Milikas. Later, so Issei Lesha and Kiba teleported with Serzichas to a location unknown to Issei, Lesha, and Kiba, they came to two wooden dark oak doors Serzichas opened them, and the trio saw a bunch of people sitting in a circle, it was the council however, three people caught his eyes, the first was a handsome man who appeared to be in his twenties, he had green hair, blue eyes and a mysterious aura around him, Issei could tell he was smart, and he felt immense demonic energy coming from him, Issei knew he would barely last a minute against him. His name was Ajuka Beelzebub. The next one was a woman with black hair, most of it ran down her back, while the rest were put into twin pigtails held by pink bands. She also had decent sized breasts, but not as large as Grafia's, is of course. This woman's name was Seraphol Leviathan. And the last one was a bald man his name was Falbamus Mautius. Serzichas went and joined them, and the Phoenix family came in as the Devil Kings introduced themselves. Zekram. Hello Issei Sparta my name is Zekram Bale you may call me Zekram, it's good to meet you in person. Issei. It's a pleasure to meet you Zekram please call me Issei. Zekram. Very well, we the council and the four devil kings would like to ask you a few questions before we get to the main topic, Issei. Okay, I'm ready. Zekram. Do you have any siblings besides Lesha you're not related by blood correct? Issei. Yes we are not related by blood and no I do not have any other siblings. Zekram. I understand you said you've been trained by Nero Sparta anyone else? Issei. Yes, the first person I trained with was Albion then Kiba then Nero. Council member 1. What exactly is your relationship with Kiba? Issei. He's one of my best friends and he's like a brother to me. Council member 2. What was your reason for your sister becoming a devil? Issei. 
She has a powerful draconic sacred gear, but she hasn't awakened it yet, however, I plan to help her with it, and I didn't force her to become a devil. I explained the dangers of having a powerful sacred gear and not being affiliated with a faction I didn't want her to become a target and Riaz was after her, so I sent her to Sona. I know Sona's a good person she smart trains her peerage and she wouldn't let anything happen to Lesha. Seraphol smiled when Issei described her sister. Council member 3. What are your goals? Issei. My goal is to become strong stronger than the current four devil kings combined and become a devil king. The councilman and the four devil kings smiled it was a good admirable goal however before they could comment to say continued. They say. That being said I'll help fix things within the underworld and the human world, but those are just small stepping stones to achieving my true goal. My goal is to defeat Great Red to become the true white dragon emperor, the true white dragon god emperor. That being said someday I'll take down Great Red. Everyone except Lesha who didn't know who Great Red was was taken aback, here was this young man who already was near low ultimate class and proclaimed to be the strongest white dragon emperor in existence, and he wanted more power he wanted to take down Great Red, the most power being in existence, they say. To that end, I must become stronger to protect the ones I love not only that Albion looked up to Great Red, so did Drake as it is said in the chant that Yurn and Fred over the dream, I have no doubt they would have become dragon gods had they not been sealed, as a result, due to wanting to protect the people I love and helping Albion achieve his dream I'll take down Great Red. Everyone in the room smiled at his reasoning they were glad he wasn't getting drunk with power. Sirziches. You do realize Great Red is the strongest being in existence right? They say. Yes, but that doesn't matter I will achieve my goal, Ajuka. Considering your growth rate I believe it just might be possible, but you do understand you'll be the center of attention if you kill Great Red right? They say. Who said anything about killing I will simply beat him into submission, Album. Good now I believe it's time to move on to the next topic, Seraphal. Yes it's regarding your status under normal circumstances being classified as a low ranking devil and defeating a low ultimate class devil, especially one like Riser, would automatically promote you to high class and eventually ultimate class however. Serziches. We are unable to make you high class due to you being too new to devil life, people don't exactly trust you enough, and so if we promote you to high class right now many people would like it and it will ruin the peace and balance in the underworld right now and, they say. You're afraid of my power. They weren't expecting him to catch on and ask that they were considering what to say they couldn't lie to him. Zekram. Yes we are your growth rate is quite unstable. They say. Sai makes sense and I almost used the juggernaut drive which makes you even warier of my power and I haven't fully unlocked my Sparta heritage so I'll take it that I'll remain in a peerage. Zekram. Yes that is correct however we do not doubt that you'll control your power eventually and as for your question yes, we'd like you to remain in a peerage to gauge your power and also so you can grow and interact with other devils your age, considering how Rhea's ruined that. Also in due time, you will be promoted because of your accomplishments rather than your power alone. They say. Very well, in that case, I ask that when I am promoted Kiba is too you saw how strong he is during the rating game, Zekram. Of course that can be done and your sister will also be promoted once she reaches enough power, they say. Good now regarding the peerage situation, Serziches. We will allow you to choose which peerage you'd like to join it could be ours or any devil however, Riser has a suggestion, Riser. Indeed I do how about joining my sister she is just starting her peerage and I can assure you she isn't like Ria's at all. He closed his eyes and thought for a minute, they say Albion what do you think? You should accept she isn't giving off any ill intentions, and don't worry about her having my power we ask about it later on okay I accept, Ravella. Thank you. She ran up and hugged Issei like an excited child she was happy to have him in her peerage, however, she was accidentally smothering him with her breasts, Issei was having trouble breathing Lesha, Ravel, and Shulin felt jealous, Ravel. Ravella let go you're suffocating him, Ravella. Oh sorry, Issei. Gasping for air it's fine but next time please warn me beforehand, Ravella. Sure, sir awful. Kiba I believe you'd like to leave Ria's would you like to join Ravella as well, Kiba? Actually I'd like to join Sona's peerage my reason for it is that due to Ria's being gone, she'll have even more work than before and I'd like to help them out, Issei. Not to mention you have a crush on Tsubaki, Kiba. Blushing shut up Issei, Issei and the others laughed, Sir Awful. Thank you for considering my sister I'll allow you to join her, I expect you to protect her is that understood, Kiba? Yes lady Sir Awful, Sir Awful. Good, Sona is heading to the Citri domain you'll be transferred before she goes, Ajuka. Well with that settled let's start the trade. So Ajuka put his hand over Issei's chest and used a special mathematical formula to remove the evil pieces however, before he could Albion drain the magic from the evil pieces it was enough that Ajuka wouldn't notice it. Then Ravella stepped forward with her pawn pieces and put them near Issei's chest, six of them went in, but the last two mutated before going in this caught everyone's attention especially Ajuka, while Albion had a shit-eating grin, Issei. Is that it if so I'd like for the apartment we're in to be modified, so it's more space. Zekram. 
Yes, and that could be arranged, but how about a house? Issei. Sure thanks later. But that Issei teleported to the apartment. Serzich's. He's without a doubt Virgil's son. Everyone. Definitely. It's time for the real fun to begin. When Issei teleported to his room he found Raynor tied up and gagged. She was wearing a maid outfit with torture weapons. And another thing near her. She was afraid when she saw Issei. She also had a note attached to her chest. Issei grabbed it. And it read from your bro riser enjoy she belongs to you. Issei read it and had a large grin plastered on his face was going to have fun tonight. He took the tape off Raynor's mouth. Issei. Anything you'd like to say. Raynor. I have accepted my fate I know I was wrong. Please show mercy I beg you. Issei. Since you're sincere and accept responsibility, I'll show you mercy. Rainer's eyes lit up with hope, especially since Issei untied her. But it's still happening. And like that Issei destroyed her hope Issei cast a soundproof barrier. Then he grabbed her by her throat and lifted her in the air, chalking her fear took hold of her as she looked into his eyes, his draconic side manifesting in. The minute she felt a shiver go up her spine she saw no mercy or remorse. Issei. This is payback for what you did to me how's it feel him to be weak powerless and pathetic. He slammed her into the ground just enough to cause her great pain, but not destroyed the apartment she got the wind knocked out of her and squirmed trying to breathe and get free, but Issei wasn't going to let her. Issei. I thought you accepted responsibility him. He asked as he sent ice magic into his hand while choking her, freezing her inside out she wanted to scream in pain, but couldn't Issei nearly froze her throat, no answer huh, then let's try this, he then sent fire magic into his hand, melting the ice and giving her a second degree burn in the inside out, Rainer screamed to the top of her lungs oh, now you speak it seems you were lying looks like I need to punish you even more, Rainer. No please stop I'll do anything I beg you, Issei. Did you stop when I begged you? Did you listen to my pleas and cries? No you didn't, so why should I listen to you? He choked her even more, she had spit foaming out her mouth, and she was about to lose consciousness, but before she could Issei let her go. As she tried to regain her breath Issei kicked her across the room, breaking several of her ribs Issei, then walked towards her used twilight healing. Now he was releasing some of his draconic aura, making her submit she obeyed without hesitation, after she healed herself, Issei did like this clip. He then stood on her back and grabbed her fallen angel wings she was so proud of. Rainer. No please I beg you anything, but, her pleas were cut short as Issei ripped out her wings she screamed in agony, but was the worst pain she'd ever felt it was painful for any being with wings, then he forced her to heal herself, and he did it over and 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 over, then he finally stopped he grabbed, broke all her bones and healed them, this went on for 30 minutes. Then he grabbed a whip tore off the rest of her remaining clothes and stuck her across her back 200 times, then he forced her to heal herself, then he repeated it several times by the time he was done, he had whipped her 2000 times, he forced her to heal herself again, but this time he decided to have some fun. He threw her on the bed and used magic to disable her legs. Rainer. What are doing are you going to grate me? Stay away pervert. Slap. Issei. Shut the buck up bitch now let's play a game. Rainer. A game? Issei. If you can last long enough for me bucking you relentlessly and not kum I let you go, you can even kill me if you so desire. But if I win you will become servant to me and my descendants forever, do you accept? Rainer. Yes I accept Rainer wasn't about to pass this opportunity up, she hated Issei for making her a hybrid when she was once a pure-blooded fallen angel, she was supposed to serve Azazel and win his undying love, not serve the devils. She was going to torture the hell out of Issei to the point making him beg for death, then she'd kill him in the most gruesome way possible. Some lemon skipped. Issei. Stupid bitch thought she could beat me I have increased stamina due to being part dragon. But that, Issei fell asleep. Chapter 13 Aftermath and Revenge Part 3 Final While Issei was busy having fun with Raynor, Riser was plowing Rias and her peerage into submission and torturing them, especially Akeno. After a restless night of bucking the Lut Raynor, Issei woke up, he was glad it was the weekend which meant no school. Raynor lay next to Issei covered in Kum sleeping soundly he smiled, remembering the pleasure of torturing her last night, then he remembered Ulshara and Nero, he hadn't spoken to them lately. Issei. Morning guys, hope you had a good sleep. Issei said as he heard a grumble from Nero and laughter from Elsha and Albion. Oh dear, I did have a bit of trouble sleeping with all that racket, but still, I'm happy for you dear. I'm happy for you Issei you finally got revenge on that bitch congratulations bro. Issei. Yeah but it's far from over I still have to get revenge on Rias and the half-breed lud I was considering Kaneko, but she's not worth it, do you have any ideas for the red-headed bitch, perhaps you should ask Riser. I'm willing oh help as well I agree with Ilshar alright I'll text him, now I just have to wait for him to respond. Oh he said camels. That's interesting. Issei grinned he had a plan Rias suffer recently, Issei has become a bit sadistic due to Ilshara. 
Olshara is different compared to Elsha who is sweet kind, loving, fierce when need be, a master in Norse and Slavic magic, has control over light, is a martial artist, and a master swordswoman Olshara, on the other hand, is a sadist, and into S and M it turns her on, she's ruthless to her enemies, sometimes merciful, tyrannical, specializes in Norse and Slavic magic and black magic, has control over darkness said to rival Nyx the primordial goddess of night, stern, a drill sergeant, martial artist sweet, kind, caring, and fond of Issei, and she's a part of the reason why Issei is sadistic. Then Rainer started to move around, then she sat up rubbing her eyes, simultaneously wondering why was she naked, then she opens her eyes and saw Issei she blinked a few times before realizing what happened. Rainer. What did you do to me? Stay away, Issei. Relax I'm not gonna torture you, for now, you lost the game remember making you a slave to me, my harem, and my descendants forever. Rainer thought back then she realized what happened Issei had won, and she passed out she started to think of ways to escape, she tried to run away from Issei, but she couldn't feel her legs due to the power Issei, and Albion specialize in the power of supreme ass, bucking the supreme power over butts, that's how hard he bucked the lot, Issei. There's no point in running away, Rainer. No I refuse to serve you I'd rather die, Issei. Too bad I don't feel like killing you now go make a large breakfast, Rainer. I refuse I. Rainer stopped suddenly grabbing her chest in the area where her heart is it felt like it was being crushed and she had a hard time breathing. This was the result of Issei using the servant pact he was torturing Rainer. Issei. Have you forgotten? You can't disobey or refuse my commands if you do, this or something worse happens not to mention I can kill you if I want. Rainer. Please make it stop. Issei. But I thought you wanted to die him, what happened to that? He tightened the grip on her heart making the pain more severe. Rainer. Strained I I was bluffing I was wrong, I'm a stupid lying lut please master you beg you to forgive me, Issei. Very well now go make breakfast, but before I decide to kill you a no. Snap he used magic changing and put a maid outfit on her. I might have a guest and I can't afford to have you walking around naked for now. So once the bitch legs were healed by Issei, she went to make breakfast which was sure to be to Issei's specifications, due to him imprinting in her mind the things he likes to eat meanwhile. Issei got up and took a shower to clean himself up and get ready for the day to day Issei's house was supposed to be built. Issei relaxed as the hot water hit his body, which due to being a dragon, can handle temperatures other can't. If you fool oh my darling you're becoming very dominant I like it and you're packing quite a lot I wonder if the other girls can take it. Issei instinctively covered his hick. Issei. Hey Shara, don't just go checking me out it's a thing called privacy. Too late I've been checking you out for a while, besides don't act like you haven't been having dreams about me being naked and bucking me. Issei was silent as he was blushing hard, he completely forgot Shara could look into his mind and dreams. If you fool I don't mind it's natural for you men can't withstand my radiant beauty, besides you're still a teenager, I don't mind you taking in my beauty but that aside, you must continue training if you want to protect everyone. She's right you know just because you can beat in your ultimate class devil, doesn't mean you get to slack off, you must get stronger to protect your loved ones, especially if you want to take down Great Red, not to mention you have to make it to the top 10 of strongest beings work your way through it and take down office. Issei yeah I know, we can work on it later for now I gotta deal with our new house. But that Issei got out of the shower and dried off, then he walked to the kitchen where Rainer served Issei his breakfast, then she excused herself by saying she was going to take a shower which Issei allowed, then as Issei was eating Rainer tried to stab Issei in the back of his neck with a knife, but to her surprise, he caught the knife. She was shocked she hadn't expected him to react so fast he then twisted her arm as he got up making her scream in pain, then he pinned her against the wall. Issei. Did you really think that paralyzation poison would work on me? Rainer's eyes widened, trying to figure out how to know and why it wasn't working one. I'm too powerful for that measly shit to work remember bitch, I'm a low ultimate class devil, too. I'm part dragon, so I smelled that shit when I walked in and dragons have the fastest brains, reactions, and instinct it's what makes us so dangerous, 3. I felt your aura and lastly 4. Poisons don't work on us dragons you should have thought this through before pulling this little stunt of yours by the time Issei had finished trainer was shaking knowing she was screwed and she realized how badly she underestimated Issei she was a fool thinking she could outsmart Issei. Then Issei put his hands around her throat now I didn't have any plans on torturing you but I'll have to change that I suppose I Issei stopped and let go of Rainer as he felt a familiar power magical energy when he went to the door he saw Ajuka Beelzebub. Issei. Lord Beelzebub please come in. Ajuka. Thank you and please call dot me Ajuka. Issei. Okay, I assume you're here regarding the new house. Ajuka. Yes are you ready? Issei. Yes make sure everything is packed by the time I get back. Issei told Rainer using the mental link between them. Ajuka. Alright then let's go. They teleported to the new house, while the Lut Rainer packed up the house, leaving only Kiba's things, since he was going to be living in the Citri house with the rest of Sona's servants, excluding Lesha. When they arrived Issei was speechless as he had wide eyes. Issei. 
this is all mine, Ajuka. Yes let's take a tour, this is the living room, this is the kitchen, the downstairs bathroom, the dining room, now let's head to the basement they got in an elevator this is the conference room, the lounging area, the training room installed with the latest tech much like the restore of the house, and the training room is capable of hold surgiches at half his power, and the same goes for the laboratory, the torture room sigh courtesy of Venelana Gremory, minus the blood and dirt and its high tech as well, now let's head upstairs, this is your room, your sister room, the bathrooms, you also have several guests rooms and bathrooms any questions? I say. Um no it's a lot to take in, but thank you, Ajuka. No problem now I must go enjoy the rest of your day. Later on Issei arrived at the outskirts of the Phoenix Territory at the location Riser told him when Issei arrived, he saw a mansion and walked towards it, when he arrived at the door the servants opened it for him. Made one. Hello Lord Issei Lord Riser informed us of your arrival the bitch is upstairs in the first room to the left, and please don't hesitate to tell us and you need something, Issei. Thank you time for some payback Issei reached the room the maid had told him he opened the door and saw Ria's tied up hanging from the ceiling and had a sadistic when Ria saw Issei she started squirming hopelessly trying to escape, she had seen that sadistic before and knew it wouldn't end well for her, Ria's. Stay away you filthy pervert don't touch me. Issei grabbed Ria's by her face and smacked the shit out of her several times before using magic to remove the chains that she was hanging on the ceiling by, causing her to drop to the ground, then Issei kicked her in the face you could hear her nose break, then he threw her across the room, breaking a few of her bones, then Issei healed them after that he ripped of her clothes. Ria's. Issei please stop I'm sorry. Issei just stood there for a moment, then he laughed it sent shivers up Ria's spine and made her afraid. Issei. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. You think I'm going to for you because you say sorry. You're stupider than I give you credit for Ria's bitchery I suffered through hell because of you, that's why I'm getting my revenge extremely simple right. Ria's. Our revenge. They say. Isn't that what I said bitch? Ria's. But I saved you when Raynor killed you if I didn't make you my servant. They say. I would have died. Fun fact Ria's my Sparta heritage would have saved me no problem I didn't need you besides Albion would have woke up and saved me, you're worthless Ria's no one needs you, Ria's. But I. Issei grabbed her by her hand and held it while leaving her body on the floor. Issei. Ria's wanna play a game? Ria's. G game? Issei smiled even more then he snapped her finger and she screamed loudly. Issei. Maybe if your body is messed up you'll feel the feel the guilt of the things you have done. Ria's. I'll give anything power a title ah. Issei had broken another finger. Issei. Listen up stupid bitch I'm going to break your fingers one by one if you can keep quiet until they're all broken, then you win, and my revenge will be over, I'll be under your complete control. But in the event you scream, Ria's. I I understand I'll do it and if I endure all of it, they say. I'll keep my promise I swear on my title as the White Dragon Emperor and my family bloodline I'm not like you Ria's bitchery. So Issei broke her fingers one by one the bitch didn't dare scream, then there was one left, Issei. Hmm, I'm surprised you've managed to hang until there's only one left you're trying quite hard huh, I guess I lost then he healed them, and Ria's whimpered like a puppy being kicked the pain was too much for the bitch well, let's start again from the first one, Ria's. And no that's unfair you said this, Issei broke her finger, Issei. Too bad, you were so close I win he healed her finger, paralyzed her legs and threw her on the bed and used magic to remove his own clothes, Ria's saw what was about to happen and tried talking her way out of it, Ria's. No please forgive me stop this she tried running away, but couldn't her legs weren't responding am my legs, they say. It's no use I paralyzed your legs and forgive you, did you listen to me when I begged and pleaded him? Oh well time to grape you, Ria's. No no I am a princess, a high ranking devil, heir to the Grimmery family, sister of the great devil King Lucifer, I will never allow a low ranking filthy perverted devil like you enjoy me, she was crawling while saying this shit, they say. Sigh and here I thought Riser bucking you while in a room full of camels and then trapping you in here with them would teach you a listen sigh, I guess not well I'll just have to break you he slapped her with his hick and summoned two camels, Ria scooted away from him Ria's, I'll let you choose my hick or these camels hick, Ria's. Um well I, I say. If you don't choose in 10 seconds they're both going in 10 9 8, Ria's. Why your hick your hick would be better, I say. It would be better I see. So you mean you don't like my rod, huh? In that case I won't force it one you. I let the camels buck you instead, Ria's. I want to say's hick please Ria's wants to say's magnificent hard heavenly hick please buck me with your strong hick, she said this while bowing and tears rolling down her eyes as say laughed, as say. All right as you wish so called master Ria's Gremory you're so desperate for my hick you're such a pervert, Ria's, Ria's. Why yes I'm a pervert a filthy looty pervert, I worship your heavenly supreme hick, as say. All right I have a gift for you bitch get in all four, Ria's. Yes as you wish. Issei then shoved his head on Ria's hussy, filling it with magic Ria's moaned with pleasure, when he pulled his hand out Ria's yelled in pain, as a strange sensation was happening in her hussy. Ria's. What did you do? Issei. 
I gave you a temporary hymen that way you can feel your virginity being taken again, since Riser already took it, Rias. No, please I, I say. Oh so you want the camels to do it, Rias. No please buck me buck me master buck me hard, I say. Fine I'll give you what you want, Rias. T thank why. It hurts it hurts it hurts be gentler I'm going to die I'm going to die of course you feel that way, I say's hick is 27 inches, but you really weak since Shulin took it, I say. What? The more you scream the more I like it, the more you hurt the better I feel I can't stop now. He slapped her ass continuously making her scream even louder. The screams were heard throughout the mansion Akeno, who was listening to Ria's scream, was afraid of what Issei was going to do to her, the memories of Riser still haunted her. Ria's. It hurts I'm sorry don't hit me I'm sorry. Issei grabbed her by her head, causing her more pain she thought she was going to pass out. Issei. Shut up bitch and deal with it, or maybe you need more punishment, I guess I'll just finish up I've still got to bitches to deal with. Ria's. Stop please I beg you just don't come in me please, I say. You don't want me to come inside you. In that case I'll destroy your stomach with my coom, Rias. No stop I beg you I'll do anything I really don't want it, she yelled in pleasure as Issei coomed inside her filling her till it was gushing out of her Issei, truly had a monstrous hick Rias feel on the floor, when Issei took his hick out, she was unable to move Issei broke her, but there was one thing let before she was broken completely mentally, physically, and spiritually, Issei. You were a good toy Rias, but it's time for the camels to have their fun, Rias. But you promised, I say. I promised I'd let you be free if I broke all your fingers, and you didn't scream which of course I took into account my magic begin deleting after healing you over and over. The camels surrounded Rias I say used some magic to make them horny, Rias. No, you can't know. Her cries and disputes were drowned as I say put up a noise-canceling barrier and left the room. Once Issei was done with Rias he went to Akeno and gave her the same treatment as Rainer, but worse, and when he went home, he dragged Rainer to the torture room which he was glad Venelana gave him, and tortured her for a good while before bucking her, after that he went to sleep he was tired and happy. He trained tomorrow. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.